Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thanks so much for joining me here today on the show. Can't wait to get into a new topic, which concerns nanoparticles and how they are causing inflammation and all sorts of inflammatory health issues without people even knowing about it. So this is always one of the disturbing things that we are being exposed to, almost like an ex- science experiment from a lot of these big corporations always looking to use what they consider cutting edge technologies that are actually harming us us in the short term and long term. And there is now scientific research backing this up. So essentially what nanoparticles are is that or nanotoxins are is they are toxins that are invisible to the human eye. And I'll get to the the main one in just a moment that we're going to be watching out for. But you can't see them. Think about that. So these toxins are in a lot of the uh, foods that we're eating, the water that we're consuming, and yet it's so small that we don't know what's in there. And again, even something like lead, like think of lead. People have been exposed all over the United States, all over the world, to higher levels of lead in their water. And they didn't know about it because they can't taste it, right? They can't see it. Well, it's the same thing on a daily basis, whether it be pollution in the air, uh, pollution in our soil, pollution in our food, of course, especially our drinking water. So what we're talking about is now, I always say 77,000 because when I wrote the rain barrel effect, uh, that was the research that I was using from the World Health Organization. And now we know in the United States, uh, there's well over 100,000 man-made chemicals. And, and yes, this, this should be scaring us. It really should because we can't pretend like it's not going on any longer. Now, the good news is this. We know how to get them out of our body for the most part. And we also know how to stop consuming the vast majority of them. So that instead of being exposed to thousands a day, we might be exposed to dozens a day. And now on a daily basis, if we're giving our body what we need to ramp up that phase one and phase two liver detox, and if you listen to yesterday's show, how to ramp up your brain's ability to detox these heavy metals and other uh, chemicals, well, we're able to do that. So we don't have to worry about it, that we, that we will be okay, but we can't pretend like it's not happening. That's the big issue. So the main one that I want to talk about today, because these are, again, nanoparticles so small we can't see them. We've done many, many shows on heavy metals. That's not today's show, although heavy metals are something to watch out for, no doubt about it. We want to talk about nanoplastics today, because you may not have heard about it, but nanoplastics are in so many of the everyday products that we used. I don't know if you remember this, but just a few years back, not too long ago, in at least the US and Canada, it's now been outlawed in the US, Canada, New Zealand, I'm not sure about Europe, but we'd have to we'd have to look that up. Uh, but there used to be facial exfoliators. So basically, think of it as like, Um, There's a lot of natural ones out there. I think Himalayan makes one that it's a facial cleanser and they use little, uh, they use uh, walnut shells, like the hulls and they're obviously micronized, but it's, of course it's natural. It's from walnuts. Now what, big corporations used to use, of course, because it's much cheaper, is they would use plastic beads, small little plastic beads. And they didn't care necessarily about people's health and the absorption of some of that plastic through the skin, which, by the way, is a dermis layer. It's, I should say it's a semi-permeable layer. And But what they cared about was that these little plastic beads were clogging up the drains, clogging up water, clogging up maybe septic tanks after a while. So, of course, now those plastic beads were outlawed. But what they don't tell you is that a lot of those plastics, not just from those uh, facial exfoliators, were going going back into the water supply. So they may have stopped the little plastic beads and exfoliators, but they have not stopped all the other plastic that does go into our water-based systems that get recycled and then back into our drinking water. And again, I, I spoke about this in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, and, and it was shocking to a lot of people, but not everybody gets drinking water from a reservoir, meaning like this pure, 
beautiful, pristine body of water that we like to think about. Not everybody has that, right? Not everybody gets their water from there. Many people in most places get their water from, believe it or not, cleaned septic, or I shouldn't say septic, but clean sewage water. And I know that sounds gross. And it, I guess it kind of is, but it is it is purified. But they essentially run it through these huge uh, water plants, clean the water, they add back in the chlorine, they add in all sorts of different things. Typically, there's some aluminum adjuncts put in there uh, to help pull out other heavy metals, but of course, you still have aluminum there. And um, that is that becomes your drinking water. But let's just say that even wasn't bad enough. Many people have had the pipes in their house switched over to plastic-based tubing because it's flexible tubing. And that tubing then is better and more easily able to run throughout the house. The problem is now we have our water, especially hot water, running through these plastic-based tubes. After a while, don't you think that that plastic would eventually leach into your drinking water, bathing water, etc.? And the answer would be yes. So why does this matter? Well, it's now gotten even worse. These are the things that we never know about. That's why, again, it is so important that you only purchase when you're making your Amazon purchases, that when you're making your food purchases, your supplement purchases, that you purchase from a company that you trust, that they're doing the right thing. Because here's what we just found uh, from a great research center. I, I read all of their stuff uh, from McGill University in Canada. Well, here's what they just found. And this is after quite a, a bit of some research, is that most most commercial, so many, many commercial tea bags out there, right? You think you're doing something nice, you're having your tea, or you're going out to a restaurant and you're having tea. Well, those tea bags, they don't feel like it, they don't look like it, are actually nanoplastics. And I want to explain that. So a microplastic would be like the size of a strand of human hair. But a nanoplastic would be about one thousandth the size of a human hair. Think about how small that is. Now, when woven together to make that tea bag, what does it feel like? Well, it feels soft and it feels like, well, like a cloth based tea bag. And so that's what you're looking like. Oh, this is just an all natural tea bag, but it's not. So now think about adding hot water or boiling water to that tea bag. And the plastics begin to dissolve right into the hot water, the tea that you are drinking. And when that happens, here's what they found. This is an exact quote. McGill University in Canada, and I'll link up to the research today at stephencabral.com forward slash 1853. McGill University said, we show that steeping a single plastic tea bag at brewing temperatures releases approximately 11 0.6 billion microplastics and 3.1 billion nanoplastics into a single cup of the beverage. That's it, right? One tea bag. One tea bag releases 11.6 billion microplastics and 3.1 billion nanoplastics. Now, where do those go? They go into the digestive system, they move then into your bloodstream, and then they can circulate anywhere in your body, including your brain that we just spoke about yesterday. This is serious. This is the real deal. You could be unknowingly consuming plastic. And when you consume it, it moves into the body and it creates an inflammatory cascade. The immune system knows it shouldn't be there. Your liver knows it shouldn't be there. Your brain knows it shouldn't be there. And when those plastics start to set up shop and start to move into the joints or the brain tissue, or wherever it might be, it's going to cause inflammation. Your body knows that that plastic is foreign. So it creates what? a white blood cell or some type of immune-based attack. What does that immune attack look like? Inflammation. Do you see why I say inflammation is not a root cause issue? That inflammation is not always meant to be squelched? It's not. Because if you squelch the inflammation, you put a Band-Aid over it, and you didn't fix the underlying root cause issue. 
And the underlying root cause issue in this case is poor detox. Yes, but the poor detox stemmed from consuming plastics that you didn't even know about. Again, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's not. It's not in the frame right now. But I always, I always, I have apples every day. So I have an apple every day. It's just part of my routine. I started a few years back. Always liked apples. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm, I like systems and I like routines. I'm gonna have an apple every single day. And so that's what I do. But on many apples, if you are not getting from a farm you trust, if you're not getting organic, there is a wax coating on the outside of those apples. And you can see if you, again, you'd never have to believe me. You don't. Check out on YouTube, um, boiling, boiling water poured over apple or boiling water poured over wax on apple. And you will see this plastic film start to come off the outside of that apple that you can't just wash off. You need to literally scrub off, soak off or boil off, right? This is not, this is not what we want to be putting in our bodies. So the reason I mentioned this too, is there's one more thing. All of these bag, like plastic bags out there that they say, Oh, microwave safe microwaving in plastic is never safe. It's never safe. Putting a bag of plastic in boiling water just because it says that you can for your rice or whatever is not safe. I remember I used to do this all the time in college. I was so inflamed in college too for many different things, but that was like every night I was, I was trying to be getting, I was in natural bodybuilding then and trying to build up my body. Every night I would have a can of tuna, talking about mercury, uh, and I would have a bag of instant rice that I would just boil in water in the microwave. And it was this plastic bag. And then it was easy, right? I just ripped open the bag, put it in a bowl, put the can of tuna on top, put some olive oil on, a little salt, and I was good to go. I mean, there's so many things wrong with that picture. But anyway, what I'm saying is that uh, I, was, I was unknowingly getting all of those plastics in my body. And the same has happened to you if you're being exposed to any of these uh, microwave plastic things, uh, boil pasta in plastic bags, not a good idea. And this is, uh, so let me go on to share with you the rest of the research. So that was just one part of the study. So what they started to do is they say, okay, let's test out these theories. And although it's just done on, on small aquatic based, uh, in this case, a water flea, they actually added a little bit of this plastic um, to the water of that water flea. And why uh, the, the research shows that while it did not kill the water flea, and actually the water flea began to create or have anatomical abnormalities. And we're seeing that all the time now in nature. Frogs being exposed to pesticides and plastics are actually having difficulties with reproduction and reproductive organs. And we see all sorts of behavioral based issues. And that was found in that water flea as well. The lead researcher here, by the way, is her, their name is Hernandez, Dr. Hernandez. And the other research went on to show this. And this is really interesting. I'm going to read this to you that the microplastics is not always a one-time assault on the body. They can begin to build up in the organs of the body and potentially the brain like we spoke about on yesterday's podcast. And that also, that in the shower or any of the plastics that you might be exposed to, that you could inhale them, which also then moves through the lungs into your bloodstream. It does show that these nanoparticles, nanotoxins, can move past the blood-brain barrier, affecting the brain as well as unborn children uh, inside of their mother. Uh, that these uh, chemicals that basically you have plastics, but then there are other chemicals that can attach themselves to the plastic and then move into your cells as well, which is e equally dangerous because that could potentially apply to heavy metals as well. We talked about the inflammation. The inflammation, again, is caused by, though, an underlying root cause, right? Inflammation doesn't come out of nowhere. The underlying cause right here are the toxins coming into the body. I've spoke about this before. I talk about it um, inside of IHP, of course, but also uh, inside of my female hormones uh, rebalancing health results accelerator, how plastics and these toxins can begin to increase estrogen in both men and women, causing a host of health-based issues. And uh, the last part I'll, I'll share with you is that 
These plastics are being shown to move through the entire body and being picked up in people's stool as well. So Again, this is something that I wanted to dedicate a whole show to, and the reason I did is that we need to be able to combat our environmental toxins on a daily basis, and that means it first starts with trying not to put any more of them into our body. So if you are someone that enjoys drinking tea and using those little tea bags, just make sure that you contact the manufacturer and that you make sure that they are not using uh, nanoplastics, that they're not using plastics, that those are all natural uh, woven cloth-based material. Um, something that that's obviously uh, hasn't been bleached, that is an or organic based material that you can use. The second is that you could simply use loose leaf teas, and I will link up um, simply a tea steeper that you could add. Uh, all you have to do is pour hot water over it, almost like a French press, and you can make your tea that way. And they also make stainless steel. I don't know if you want to use stainless steel, but they make stainless steel uh, balls that you open up, you put your loose leaf tea in there, and then you can actually then put that into the water and you can pour water over it. And then, of course, it comes with a little chain. You can pull it right out of the water as well. So that's one way to do it with tea. Very, very easy, easy to do. And just be careful because when you're going out to a lot of restaurants and places, uh, they're going to have, of course, the plastic-based tea bags. They don't, they don't even know it, of course. So what I would say is really simple. You can put a tea bag in your pocket, your pocketbook, whatever you might carry. And you can always just ask the uh, server at your local restaurant to simply give you, uh, and you can pay for it, a cup of hot water. And you'll put your own tea bag in. That's what I do when I fly on airplanes. I just ask for some hot water. And I probably already have my own thermos with me. And then I can just pop a bag of hibiscus tea, which is one of my favorites, right in there and and I'm good to go. So that's easy to do. Another thing is that, again, you just want to make sure, I can't stress this enough, but you need to make sure that you are doing functional medicine detoxes every 12 weeks. It's a simple seven-day process. Uh, it's honestly... It helps the entire body because you're never going to know everything that you're exposed to. And it's just in terms of being able to reset that whole body, that's the number one thing that you can do. Uh, I have a free course on functional medicine detoxes. Talked a little bit about yesterday, but it's equi.life. That's our website, equi.life. And then just do forward slash detox dash course. I'll link it up today uh, in the show notes. All show notes will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 1853. And of course, that's where the uh, research will be linked up as well. Okay. So those are my highest recommendations for you. And the last one is this. Since a lot of this is traveled through water, that you want to make sure that you have a good quality water filter. There are so many different ones out there, honestly. There are $5,000 ones, $2,000 ones. Uh, the ones I like that will last you forever for a very long time. You just have to replace the filters uh, every six months to a year, depending on how much, uh, how long you use it. Uh, I like the Berkey filters. I think they're great. Uh, they're simple to use. I recommend the big uh, charcoal filters, not just charcoal, but the big uh, charcoal filter on top. And then the fluoride filters on the bottom. There's always coupon codes that they give us uh, to be able to pass along to you in our community. Uh, we, again, I don't own stock in this company. I just think that they've been doing it forever. They, they have a really good product. So that's that. But I also recommend shower filters. I recommend bath filters. These are charges that you kind of pay up front and then it's, it's maybe $50 every six months to a year to get new filters maximum. That's it. And your shower filter and water filter are even less than that. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash resources, you're going to be able to find the water filters I recommend because there are whole house, whole house filters that you can get so that you don't need to filter the rest. I recommend reverse osmosis filters there if that's what you like. Um, better than... Uh, uh, what are those pictures called that everybody has or used to have at least? Well, it's probably good that I can't recommend the name because I don't re or refer to the name because I can't recommend them. Uh, but those are all ones that I can highly recommend. And uh, again, I use shower filters. I use a bath filter for my girls uh, or if my wife takes a bath. And, uh, and of course, we use uh, a Berkey water filter as well. Just easy. Again, like I don't like to think, I don't like to put a lot of thought process into these things. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. And then, of course, we also do the vinegar wash for our fr fruits and veggies for 
for produce. So those are things that you can start on right away. Hopefully this was helpful, of course. If it was, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. All the links are at stephencabral.com forward slash 1853 for today's show. I appreciate you listening all the way to the end of the show. And before you go, what I want to do is share with you what is going on right now over at our global health practice, equa.life. That is where all of our health coaching, our protocols, our at-home lab testing, all nutritional supplements, basically everything lives there that was inside of our Boston practice that we've now made a global-based process and practice to open source everything that you could get in a functional medicine concierge practice. Now open that up to the entire world. So we're always excited about being able to share with you what's new, what's the latest, what's the greatest that we want to be able to bring to people. And this week we want to be able to get you a bottle of our daily digestive enzyme. This is absolutely one of our most popular products. And that is because if you're dealing with bloating based issues, slow digestion, gas after meals, or of course, just kind of feeling like a little bit too full after you eat, an enzyme can help with those particular issues. So right now on all orders over $99, uh, you are going to get a free bottle of our daily digestive enzyme. This is a almost $40 value, yours free on orders over $99. And again, I know many of you uh, took advantage of that uh, minerals and metals based test last week. If you have low levels of minerals on that lab test, uh, you'll know that you're not absorbing all of your nutrients properly, which is also another great reason to be using an enzyme. Just about a couple years ago, I said to myself, honestly, there's no downside to using an enzyme for me at my whole food based meals. And that's exactly what I do every single day. It's part of my daily foundational protocol level three. And I use it with every lunch and every dinner to break down my food to a greater degree. And again, I want to be able to share that same product with you. So you can test it out yours completely free on all orders while supplies last at equa.life. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. Take care, everyone.